This is Hank Pym himself, Michael Douglas, and you are listening to the Movie Thoughts Podcast. Here's your host, Dominic Tartamella. Hello, thank you. Hank Pym himself, Michael Douglas. Uh, a, a great introduction. Welcome back to the Movie Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, as Mr. Michael Douglas just said, uh, Dominic Tartamella. And another fun-filled episode, obviously. Um, you know, we're always getting the guests, right? We're always getting the top-tier celebrities doing uh, introductions and stuff like that. But today, we're talking about a Marvel film. We are talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Quando, Quando, Um, Quantum Physics, Quantum Leap, almost like Quantum Leap. Did you ever watch Quantum Leap? Pretty good fucking show, Quantum Leap. It's fun. Uh, Scott Bakula, he's jumping in people's bodies through time and space. Um... Fun, fun show, you know. They tried to remake it recently. I don't think it went anywhere. I don't know if it's still going. But yeah, we're we're into it, right? Let's get into this movie. So we're into Ant-Man. And we're going deep down into that uh, quantum realm. Obviously, we've heard about in the last two movies. Uh, Peyton Reed directs this film. Obviously. We got the returning cast. We got Paul Rudd. We got Eva Jeline. Eva, Eva, Eva Jeline. I can never pronounce this lady's name. Let's, let's see. Eva. <laughs> it's I can't. You can't read. Rocky 2. When he's trying to do the uh, the commercial. Right? And uh, when I go out with the guys and I put it on and it makes me smeal mainly. Smeal mainly, Rock? Um, yeah. Uh, I can't read. No. <laughs> Evangeline, Ev- 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 not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore. Okay. Hope. She plays Hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I'll say. I'll stop. But she's in this film again. Uh, Michael Douglas. Hank Pym. He's back. Okay, the legend, the legendary Michael Douglas. Who doesn't love Michael Douglas? Um, you know, Wall Street, just just a fun actor, right? Um, what's Basic Instinct? Uh, what's what's the fucking one with the with the lady, Glenn Close? Oh uh, God, Fatal Attraction, obviously. Uh, fun filled, fun filled movie. Go watch that movie. Makes you sweat. You know, talking about sweating during a movie. Watch Fatal Attraction. But yeah, classic actor. Uh, been around forever. Father, Kirk Douglas, passed away. Got to about two hundred years old. Another good actor, Spartacus. Right. Okay, we're not going to talk about the Douglas family dynasty the whole time. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer also returning. Um, love Michelle Pfeiffer. Love her, Scarface, you know, fucking Catwoman. I got, I got Michelle Catwoman, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman tattooed on my forearm. That's how much I love Michelle Pfeiffer. Schwing. Uh, so anyway, let's get down to it. We have uh, a new cast member, Catherine Newton, who is more recently uh, in Freaky with Vince Vaughn. She is replacing uh, the previous actress, so she's playing... Uh, Paul Rudd's daughter in this film. She's grown up now. Um, you know, we we got a scene of her in Endgame, obviously with a different actress. Now I don't know what the deal is, why this actress was uh, switched. I assumed it was something like you know, maybe she wasn't acting anymore. Then I come to hear that they just kind of got a new actress. Listen, it happens. That's show business, baby. Um, Unfortunately, I saw some people saying that she found out, like, on social media that she was recast. And it's unfortunate, but it's just a cutthroat business, right? It's a cutthroat business. So what are you going to do? You're not in, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe anymore. Maybe you are, because now there's multiverses and stuff. Maybe you were the multiverse daughter. Maybe you'll come back at some point. You'll fight the other one. I don't know. They do stuff like that. Okay? 
New cast members. Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. So, uh, full disclosure. As I always say, full disclosure, 25 times an episode. I haven't been that excited with comic book movies. I was just talking about in the last episode with the Flash trailer where it's like it got me really excited for a comic book movie. But I'm kinda, I kind of get into the motions with comic book movies, right? They, you know, they get generic. It is what it is. It's a lot of the same stuff. You know, uh, the, a lot of the same beats are going on in each story, and you're kind of waiting for it. You know there's going to be a big battle. You know that in the end the good guys are going to win. It is, it is what it is. It's no different than a lot of other comics, especially Marvel and stuff like that. So I wasn't super excited for this movie. I, it, As far as like anticipation, I was like, I'm interested in seeing it. I'm a big Paul Rudd fan. He's always funny. He's always making me laugh. Uh, clueless back in the day. From there to you know, uh, you know, obviously the comedies he did with Forty Year Old Virgin, uh, Role Models. He's, he, uh, this is Forty. He's in Knocked Up. He's in. He's just a funny guy, right? He pops up movies like Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Hey man, I'm Kuno. Whatever his name is, Kano Kuno. If you've seen it, you know it. One of my favorites. But um, you gotta love Paul Rudd. He's a lovable guy. Guy doesn't age. That's a fact. Uh, debut film Halloween Six: The Curse of Michael Myers. Yes. Well, he plays a young Tommy Doyle. He played Tommy Doyle before Anthony Michael Hall was playing Tommy Doyle. Um, I don't know how you feel about Anthony Michael Hall's Tommy Doyle. You know, the whole evil dies tonight. Everybody got kind of got sick of it. It was fine. I thought it was. I thought he was hamming it up. I thought it worked. Right? Sh- sue me. You know, Paul Rudd's Tommy Doyle, creepy, uh, weird, just hanging out in the shadows. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not into Halloween movies, I don't know what to tell you. Go watch them. You'll find out who Tommy Doyle is. But that was Paul Rudd's first movie. Um, so, as I was saying, wasn't super excited for this, but definitely was something I was going to see. Uh, that, this, and Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously are the two that are coming out from Marvel movie-wise. We had Wakanda Forever. We had Thor, Love, and Thunder. Thor, Love, and Thunder was a right... A mm, little bit too much more of the same, I think, but it wasn't bad. Just kind of forgettable. You know, it was one of those movies that is forgettable. I've said it on this podcast before with films. Sometimes being that forgettable film is like the worst thing you could possibly be because it's just like, I don't even remember what happened in that movie anymore. It's not a good thing. Uh, I remember Wakanda forever more than I remember Love and Thunder. And I didn't like fucking Wakanda forever. You can listen to a previous podcast about it. I kind of bashed it because I thought it was just it was boring and not going to get into it. But the Ant-Man film, I had mild expectations, right? I never go in, in, into a movie wanting to hate it. I want to like it, obviously. Um, bringing it back around, obviously, to Wakanda forever. Movie movie's very long and... You know, when a movie's long and that combination of boring loses your attention, that was the problem, right? I want a little bit something more from my comic book movies. I mean, it, listen, coming out of the context of that movie, obviously the lead actor passed away in real life. It had a lot of drama in it. Just wasn't my cup of tea. But I'm not going to defend my thoughts on Wakanda Forever. I will watch it again soon. It is on you know Blu-ray now, and I will probably watch it. It's on Disney Plus. I'll watch it again to give it a second chance to see if maybe after my expectation is gone. Because you never know. Sometimes your your mindset changes. Expectation plays a lot into film and seeing a film. So this movie, I had mild expectations. I did start hearing reviews, Rotten Tomato buzz. Ugh, I, I don't know. I, I try not to get caught up in a lot of that bullshit because as I say on this podcast from all the fucking time. Uh, and that's why I try not to sh- do straight up reviews where I say a movie's good or bad or, you know, don't see it. I try, well, not that I don't say something's good or bad, but I try not to sway because at the end of the day, everybody's different. And, you know, somebody might fucking love Wakanda forever. I thought it was fucking boring. Somebody might love it. But the reviews coming out for Ant-Man, I, I always, like, get a little bit. I got to I got to check them out a little bit just word of mouth just to see how it's going. I try not to let that affect my opinion of the film. Uh you know, that it's it's a tricky thing because if you're reading too many reviews and you're getting lost in that and you're 
reading fucking message boards and stuff like that, uh, first reactions, maybe you get more hyped, right? Um, sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad because maybe you get overhyped. You go in. So I kind of settle myself down, right? Uh, but I also take shit with a grain of salt. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes is... is a, I get it. Listen, it's easy. We all do it. We all type in fucking Rotten Tomatoes, and we all look at what the Rotten Tomatoes score is, but it is so inaccurate. And I've probably talked about this. I don't know if I pulled numbers up on previous episodes, but, like, it's so inconsistent on movies. You know, you could look up a movie like... And I always use this as an example, so forgive me if I've talked about this on the podcast, but Wonder Woman... The first Wonder Woman. Whatever you thought of that movie, it's fine. I thought it was a decent superhero movie. I don't think it's the greatest movie ever made. Whatever. That movie has like a 90-something percent. I think E.T. is like 2% over that. Maybe it's it's like they're so close on Rotten Tomatoes that it's like I, I cannot I cannot fathom a world that I would categorize those two movies together. And that's exactly the problem, Rotten Tomatoes, right? Good or bad. Because you could get a movie that gets a rotten score. That doesn't need a fucking rotten score. Um, Babylon, recently, right? Damien Chazelle's film. People felt however they felt. It's a three-hour movie. It's an epic. It's about silent film, the transition to sound pictures. It's funny. It's weird. It's dirty. There's people having orgies. It's got like a 55% or some shit on there. It's not good. That movie, when you watch it, in my opinion, I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. I did. That's. It does not do the film justice. Just like, you know, having E.T. score be so close to Wonder Woman's score. There's these two different films. I mean, one of these movies was a, was a groundbreaking, bona fide fucking classic directed by Steven Spielberg. And the other one is, I hate to say it, but it's a generic fucking comic book movie. Whether it's a girl or a guy, it was just it was more of the same. We've seen it a hundred fucking thousand times. That's my rant about Rotten Tomatoes. So you can't take anything too seriously. Negative reviews. You gotta, you gotta just go and see a fucking movie. Because re- really, reviews don't mean anything. At the end, do they mean anything? Do Listen, are they gonna... These people are getting paid, or they're doing it, whatever, for whatever fucking reason, to... You know, say, hey, listen, go see this movie, don't go see this movie, whatever. And I do, I, I, similar, I do the same thing a little bit, what I do on this podcast, but I also am just giving my thoughts, right? I'm going down, so I'm going down a rabbit hole here. Let me stop myself. But Ant Man wasn't expecting much, saw the, the rotten stuff coming in and being like, all right, I saw like little, I like to read what people. You know, quick little things, okay? It's weird, or it's uh, it's a very sci-fi, it's a very strange movie, and this and that. I saw that. I saw a lot of people didn't like it. I saw, you know, it was a misfire and stuff like that, whatever. I get in the theater. First of all, Alamo did something cool. They had a little tiny menu with, like, a drinks thing and a wi- uh, wings for Ant-Man, and they, they, there was a little tiny magnifying glass there. That was great. I thought that was cool. Um, get you in the in the tiny mood, right? The honey, I shrunk the kids mood. So I thought that was fun. So shout out to Alamo Draft House for doing that. Uh, I saw it at a premiere. I think it might have been the main premiere of the movie. They actually had like a little tiny ticket stub. So similar little uh, um, gesture, right? So I see this movie and... I'm always, you know, I'm always afraid with superhero movies, especially when I'm watching them, I'm waiting for the ball to drop off. It starts, it's going good. I'm liking the plot, I'm following the plot. They get thrown into the quantum realm, and it gets fucking weird. It gets weird. I mean, that does one thing that any of those reviews are saying. It gets listen, it goes into these weird places. It's weird at times. It feels like fucking Star Wars. At times, it feels like Avatar in the beginning. It's it's weird. You're not even like sure what kind of movie you're watching because you kind of forget. Uh, at times, you're like, am I watching like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Because you're kind of lost, and there's a lot of different creatures and stuff like that. But as the film goes on, I was waiting, waiting, and waiting for my like you know attention to drop. And honestly, my attention that I like this movie. I thought it was fun. It's listen, it's two hours. It's funny. I mean, that's one thing about like 
Paul Rudd being in a movie, Peyton Reed directing it. It's funny. It has laughs. You know, you're not rolling on the floor, but better humor than like Thor, Love and not uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah, Thor, Love and Thunder. Right, Ragnarok was probably um, the humor worked better, I think, than Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder kind of had some misses uh, here and there, but definitely stronger humor than that. I enjoyed it. I laughed. You know, uh, I was invested in the story. The actress playing the daughter, uh, the chick from Freaky, she's good. You know, we could have, listen, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what happens to the other actress. Maybe she would have been good in it too. I'm sure she would have. This girl's maybe got more of a name they put her in, right? But uh, I'm not going to get into spoilers. I might get into I might get into some light spoilers, but I'll let you know. But overall, I like this movie. It definitely does go to some weird places. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's got a bigger role. Uh, you know, they put some backstory on her being in the quantum realm. I like that. Uh, Michael Douglas takes a little bit of a backseat in this film. He's definitely not. He's probably out of all the cast members. He's probably in it the least. I was hoping to see a little bit more of him. But, you know, like I said, you get Michelle Pfeiffer. It's more It's more focused on her story and, and what transpired in the quantum realm and before she got out and stuff like that. Then you get fucking Jonathan Majors, right? Who he's popping up in everything now. Uh, and obviously everybody knows he's playing King the Conqueror. He's set up. I mean, this is a potential spoiler. But he's, you know, going to be set up as like the new villain that's going to cross movies and stuff like that. And shit. He's a good fucking villain. I mean, this guy's a good actor. Uh, you know, he's obviously he's going to be in Creed 3 too. He's got that coming out very soon. So back to back. He has uh, two, I mean, that seems like a, a great performance as well. But yeah, holy shit. In, in the world of comic book movies, when we get these kind of lackluster villains who, you know, have fucking shitty motives and stuff like that, I, I liked him. I liked him. He really, you know, he dominates every scene he's in and he's just, he's compelling to watch. Something in his eyes. You know, I really haven't seen him in much. I've just seen him like, getting more and more popular, but this is really the first thing I think I've seen him in. Probably maybe he's popped up in a smaller role in something I've watched, but shit, this guy's good. And he's, like I said, you got a good villain with good motives on, you know, similar uh, to like Thanos, where he had his fucking reasons, and you could kind of be like, oh, fucking Thanos. I still think fucking Thanos was right. I think about it every day when I'm fucking stuck in traffic driving to work. I say, fuck, Thanos was right. Um, so he's he's got good motives, and I definitely want to see where it goes uh, across the way, he's like a major threat, you know, he's powerful, he can fucking do all this crazy shit, then you get Bill Murray in a small role, Bill Murray in a small role, cool to see, only in like really one sequence, but I felt like it was a very enjoyable scene, you know, he's got some good uh, dialogue with Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, and then he comes and he goes, you know, so don't, if you're going to see this, you know Bill Murray's in the movie, you don't expect him to be too much. Uh, in in it too much, but yeah, fun movie. Um, really, like a lot, a lot of shit is very like out of right out of fucking comic book. A lot of the scenes, the fucking, you could just see those splash pages. A lot of the the cra- especially when they're on the they're in the quantum fucking realm and the planets and the creatures and the colors and stuff like that. You could see it like right from a comic page, which was cool. Paul Rudd, always doing a good job. And this movie's got enough, like, it's got enough laughs. It's not beating you to death with the laughs either. You know, it's not like, oh, you know, that's the problem even with, like, even with um, Ragnarok and some, and sometimes, you know, they beat it over your fucking head, the laughs. They really try too hard, especially in some of these Marvel movies. And then it's kind of like, ah, they're shitty jokes. I don't think there's any shitty jokes in here. I think the comedy works. I, I don't think they beat it over your head. This is, listen, there's a lot of serious moments too. And they, they do a good transition from that stuff. Um, which, it works. It works. For Listen, that's saying a lot for a Marvel movie because it's always hard to, um, you know, balance that, not be cheesy. You know, if you're shooting 100 fucking miles a minute or 100 fucking rounds a minute and then like, 10 of them are landing and you're just getting a lot of duds. It's, it wasn't like that. It was the jokes when they said them, when humor would come, it counted, you'd laugh. 
I'm, I wasn't rolling on the floor, but it's also not that type of joke each time. But yeah, humor works. Um, yeah, I'm going to get into spoilers a little bit. So I'm at the 20-minute mark. I'll get into spoilers. So back out now. I'll give you a second. So Modox in this movie, the comic book character, uh, the giant head. I don't listen. I don't know much about Modok. I know he was recently in an animated series um, played by Patton Oswalt. I didn't watch it. I'm not like a fan of Modok. Uh, I don't know his true comic backstory. I don't know how accurate it is. I'm not going to even begin to get into that. But in this movie, they do something very interesting because they bring back Corey Stoll's character from the first Ant-Man, and now he's Modok. And he's fucking weird looking. I mean, you know if you know what Modok looks like in the comics and stuff like that, but they make him, like, even weird. They just, the way his face, and I guess if you're looking at the character from um, the design and stuff like that, you know, it is it is like that in the comic. It's just so, it's, like, stretched out, and they, they replicate it. Where it looks like, you know, it does, just doesn't look right. It's just weird to look at as you're watching it. But I appreciate that they stuck with that look uh, from the comics. And I thought, I thought he's just a funny, he's a funny character. He's a good actor, Corey Stoll. I mean, he, he's he been around for a while now. At first, when I remember first seeing him in movies, I was kind of like, ah, he's like a generic kind of. But he, he is a good actor. I don't think he gets enough credit uh, for what he does, and he's he's humorous in this, and he's just a big fucking floating head, and he's got these little arms, little legs, and I liked, it's, listen, it's awkward at first, at that point in the film, you're already seeing a lot of the weird shit, and then he shows up about halfway through that, so you're kind of like, you've seen it all at that point, but it's just, it's a little, it's hard to adjust to when he first pops up, right, and then you get in the humor, you know. There's a funny, there's funny exchanges between him and fucking uh, Ant Man, you know. Or then even later on, him and Michael Douglas, and everybody that sees him is like, "What the fuck happened to you?" Which is, is hysterical because he's a giant head. He explains his backstory and stuff like that, and I think he works, you know. And uh, his his death was was I thought that was fucking funny. That that's as close to uh, you know cracking up. And rolling on the floor that I came when he was dying. And he's like, oh, I get to be an Avenger. You're always a brother to me. And everybody's like, what? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> he worked. He, Like I said, he's a good actor. He, he, he popped up fucking in that Sopranos movie. He played, I really didn't like that movie. But he played Uncle Junior. He played him pretty fucking good. And I remember seeing him, uh, uh, you know, cast. And I was like, yeah. But he's, he's versatile, too. He's funny. You know, he can do serious stuff. Um, who else is in this fucking film? I don't know. But Kang the Conqueror, man. Fucking shit. I I was, like, kind of thinking to myself, because, listen, Marvel's never going to, like, replicate that first, you know, that, that first wave of films, right? If you're talking from Iron Man all the way to Endgame or where did it end, Spider-Man, uh... Far from home, wherever wherever the phase uh, three ended, those was it for three phases, right? Where the, that storyline took place, like Marvel's never going to replicate that again. Uh, the excitement now it's been around too long, you know the the track record as far as like which movies are great. Listen, there's not every movie's great in those you know three phases. There's movies Thor: The Dark World, Captain Marvel, uh, that just could you know be deleted from existence. And it wouldn't really matter. But as far as track record of of the consistently good ones, they're never going to replicate it again. And like the over, you know, arching villain that Thanos was, I, I always figured, listen, it's going to be hard to replicate that as well. And... I, listen, they'll never be Thanos, but this King the Conqueror, he's g- g- my as far as like my expectation of what I thought. I was like, ah, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be another fucking villain, the same bullshit, and uh, they're never gonna they're gonna try to make him like Thanos. But he's an intimidating force, uh, and and that a lot of that is because of the actor, and his performance, and his presence on the screen. You just want like you want to watch him, but he's fucking he's scary. You know, there's there's a scene in here, you know. 
obviously we're talking about spoilers, when he's threatening Ant-Man, he's got the daughter up, and it's like, I felt, and that this is something, like, in Marvel movies especially, I never feel like a danger, probably not since, like, Infinity War and Endgame, where you felt like a danger of characters dying and, like, a fear for the characters on screen, because it's, listen, it's so far-fetched at times, you just kind of take the roller coaster ride, and you know it's all going to work out in the end, right? But, like, I genuinely had some fear for the characters. It's like, oh, shit, like, he's going to kill his daughter. And he's going to kill him. And I, you know, I got, got, kind of got me. And that's because of Jonathan Major's performance. This fucking guy's intimidating. Uh, and I liked, uh, I liked what he did with his role. I liked his look, too. I liked that he uh, kind of had the more comic look when he put on his mask and stuff like that. And his eyes turned colors. I thought it made him a little creepier. But, yeah. Fun movie. I don't. I well, listen. Not the fucking. You're not gonna watch this movie. Be like, this is the greatest superhero movie ever made. No, it's not. But it's fun. Uh, it's a fast way to pass two hours, right? Throw some popcorn in your mouth. You watch Paul Rudd. You laugh a little bit. All star fucking cast. Do I have to mention again that Michael Douglas is in this movie? That Michelle Pfeiffer is in this movie? Um, <laughs> I don't think I do. Right. So yeah, it, it good good trilogy overall. I think Ant Man is right. Ant Man one's good. Ant Man two's pretty good. A little bit, a little bit on the forgettable side. I think I like this one better than Ant Man two because right now, for the life of me, I own Ant Man two and I cannot remember what Ant Man and the Wasp was even about anymore. Um, heist or something. Yeah, it was fine. But yeah, go check out Ant Man. I, th- I think it's worth a watch. I think it's a fun movie. I did, but just expect to be kind of in a weird fucking dimension. But you got to kind of expect that. But they go. They really amp up the weird. Modoc. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder how other people feel about Modoc. If they're liking it. I don't know. I want to read more about the character. Because like I said, I don't know shit about him. So I don't know if fans will be happy as far as if you're a big Modoc fan. I don't know if he did it justice. I don't know how much they changed his backstory, as I said. But I think in this film, uh, and the context of what the character is and who he be- and how he became him, I think it's funny. I think it works. And it's fucking weird. Weird movie. And it ends... I like the ending, too. I like when, like, um, Paul Rudd's just, like, playing over in his head, like, oh, how he... this You got so lucky, and this and that. And then he keeps remembering that Kang might still be alive. And he's very afraid of that. And then he keeps snapping at it. I thought that was good because that kind of told, you know, we all know if you're into this lore and stuff like that, you know that Kang is coming back, obviously, and he's going to be this big fucking villain uh, for movies, upcoming movies. But it was a good way to get the uh, casual, you know, moviegoer, the casual Marvel fan to say like, oh, so he is alive? He he is going to come back? And, you know, leave that question in the air. Uh, there are two post credit scene, uh, scenes. I didn't stay for them. I read what they were. I'm not going to get into explaining or what my thoughts are on them or whatever the fuck. Loki and other Kangs and all that shit. I'm not going to get into that. There's people that do that better uh, and are more knowledgeable on that stuff. I don't know. Where do you stand with post credit scenes? Because I am at the point that I just I walk out and I look them up later. I look him up on the car ride home because it's just not – It's a, a lot of the time I've been too disappointed. You know, in the beginning, yet again, talk about Marvel never replicating what they've done. Like that – those first fucking phases of movies, you would wait, right? Because it was like, oh, what are they going to fucking throw at you? Oh, my God, it's Captain America's shields, fucking Thor's dick. You would get excited because it was all new and it was all fun. Now I'm at the point where it's like I'm not going to wait 20 minutes to see – you know, Bruce Campbell running around with a thing on his face at the end of uh, Doctor Strange, <laughs> which I like Doctor Strange. Uh, I like the last one, too, the Multiverse of Manners. It was pretty good. I love Bruce Campbell. But there's a lot of jokes in those movies now, too, where they make you wait 20 minutes for something. I I don't want to wait there 20 minutes. I want to go, and I'll read up on it. And then if it's that cool sounding, like, I'll fucking look up a bootleg version of it on YouTube and watch it. And I'll, when I get the Blu-ray, I'll see it. So it's not that serious. But yeah, Ant-Man, Quantum, Phoenix, Saga, good movie. Uh, fun. Had a good time with it. Laughed, cried, all that stuff. Great villain. 
overall, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. I don't know. It's my Michael Douglas impression. It's based upon like one thing he said one time that, um, <laughs> shout out to you, George, because I know you're listening to this. Um, you know, you know, the one. I got cancer from basically. So basically, uh, he, he claimed that he got cancer because he had like throat cancer from, um, how could I make this as PG, um, performing sexual things on his, uh, wife, Catherine Zeta Jones with his mouth. He did stuff and he, yeah, I got cancer from eating, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'll leave you with that. That's a good way to end. There's some good joke. I gotta say, there's some funny jokes in here too. That like, listen, it's it's Marvel and everybody knows Disney, and there's funny jokes in here that are like they tiptoe around. That. I'm not saying they're fucking R-rated, disgusting jokes, but even the joke about the holes and the, that stuff, and that that, that was funny. Um, Modox a dick, dick. How many times could you say dick in a PG-13 movie? I mean, do you get away with it because it means Richard, it means other things. I don't know. Who knows? But I got cancer from eating. Yeah, he did. Oh, he claims he did. I don't know. Maybe it's. I think it is possible. I think I've looked this up. I don't know. I'm not getting into it right now because this ain't that fucking type of podcast. But I'm going to bed. It's late. Uh, check it out. Follow me on TikTok. I mean, I do some funny videos there. Uh, Twitter and Instagram. Dom Solo Reels. Check out the other episodes. It's the first time you're listening. And... Have a good night.